Amen. Amen. Praise God. We're going to have a, a really great time here. Um, this, this next season that we're walking into, Christmas is always a sweet time around here. It's my favorite time of year, man. I love it. I love this time of year, and I love to be with God's people this time of year. And, and one, of the, one of the things that uh, has just been on my heart, and uh, I know it's been on my heart because I know it's on God's heart, and he has been really dealing with us about being a blessing to our community and uh, one of the ways that you got to participate in that and to help us do that is uh, last Sunday night, you guys that, are, that were here were a part of this with us, but we, we had a, a silent auction here. And thank you, everybody that brought all of the, the things up here that we were able to auction. And what you're able to do is, is you get to see how God can take something that you made or something that you had, something that you wanted to give to the kingdom work, and God's going to take that and turn it into something supernatural. It's, it's an amazing thing to watch and see what happens. So that last Sunday night turned into $1,000 that we're able to go and then to be a blessing to uh, this community. So we're going to find some people that need some help with their light bills, with their electric bills this year. And, uh, and they're not going to be sitting in the dark at Christmas time because you allowed the Lord to use you in that way and to give and to come and, and to take part in that. So isn't that good news? Amen. Isn't that good to be a part of that? Praise God. I'm glad a few of you think so. Um, but I want to share a word with you along those lines. It's in the book of James chapter one. So James chapter one, I'm going to give you our theme verse for this season that we're coming into for the next four or five weeks. We're going to be coming right up to Christmas time. And the Lord dropped this verse in my heart several uh, weeks back as we begin to, as he began to show us this, give us this idea of how we can be a blessing to some families in our community. And this, this is not just something that we're meeting a natural need, but I want you to see this. Those of you that have some depth in your spirituality and how you're walking with God, uh, I want you to see this to a, at a new, deeper level. Those of you that, that aren't quite there yet, I want you to just go there with us here today. He's going to take you deeper, okay? But here's what we're doing. We're not just paying somebody's light bill, okay? That's not what this is about. This is a prophetic act of bringing light to darkness. You see what I'm saying? We are bringing light to darkness, and God wants us to begin to declare that over our city. He wants us to begin to declare that over our families. He wants us to begin to declare that over our homes. Come on, our jobs. Some of you hate your job, and I'm telling you that you need to take a a the opportunity that God has given to you and begin to declare, let there be light in darkness. Whenever you go to work, if you go to work with the attitude of, man, I hate this job, then you're missing it. You're missing it. You're missing the moments that God is giving to you to declare light into darkness. And this is where we're failing in the church, to bring light into darkness. And so I want to show you, this is our theme verse. We're going to memorize it together, okay? Can we do that? So over the next several weeks, I'm going to ask you to say this out loud. We're not even going to put it on the screen for you. Today's going to be the only day we'll do that, if y'all have it back there. Today's the only day we're going to put it on the screen. Next week, I want you to say it with me out loud all together. We're going to memorize this. It's really, really easy. So if you guys would put James chapter 1, verse 17 up for me on the screen. James 1.17, it's our scripture for the, uh, the wrapping up this year, moving into next year. Now read it with me. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow of turning. Come on, one more time. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow of turning. Father, we thank you for your word. I thank you that you are the Father of lights. And Lord, that you have equipped us with the light to be the light of the world, to carry your light into the darkness. So Lord, I just declare over this season that we're stepping into to be a, a season filled with light, a season filled with light overcoming and overwhelming darkness. And I thank you for it. We give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So this verse has just been over and over just rolling around in my spirit. And I know this is what the Lord wants us to really focus on for the next several weeks. And so I'm going to be in a little bit of teaching mode here and there. But don't, don't get uh, upset with me if I get a little preachy on you because it gets exciting when I start thinking about what it is that the Lord's saying to each one of us as individuals and as our church and in this community. I want to just declare this to you because this is something I heard the Lord say earlier this morning as I was preparing this message. I, be I began to hear the Lord say this. There is no place that light doesn't work. There is no place that light doesn't work. Light always works. Light always works. You need to write that down somewhere. Light 
always works. It never fails. It does not ever get overcome by darkness. It never does. It never fails. Wherever there is darkness, there will be light. I'm beginning to speak this over you because what's happening, whether you realize it or not, is there is a work going on in each one of you on the inside. As I speak the word of God to you today, the Bible says that you are being filled with light. Do you believe that? Have you ever heard that scripture before? Let's look at it together. It's in Psalm, uh, in the book of Psalms, chapter 119, verse 130. Psalms 119, 130. I want you to see this. So put this up there or flip to it real quick. Psalms 119, 130. Did y'all find it back there, guys? I didn't give them these ahead of time, so they're trying to keep up with me. But I like to have it up there for you guys to see it if we can. Psalm 119, 130. The entrance of your words gives light. Look at this. The entrance of your words gives light. It gives understanding to the simple. I'm a pretty simple guy. I need understanding. Who else in here needs understanding? Sometimes we're walking through things and we need understanding. There are things in my life right now that I don't have understanding about. But you know what this scripture promises me? These promises that we've been singing about that are yes and amen. It says that his word, the entrance of your words gives light. What is that? The receiving, the entrance as the word of God is coming into your life. It is bringing light into you. Now, this is something amazing to me, because if you think about it, God so values light that it was the first thing he created. Let's look at it together. Genesis chapter one. I've got just a couple of scriptures. I've already flipped to several of them, but Genesis chapter one. And many of you know this one, but we're going we're gonna to come back to our James one here in a minute. But in Genesis one, I want to show you this. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was on the face of the deep. What was? Darkness was on the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. And then God said, let there be light. Let there be light. I wonder what would happen if we came into this Christmas season together, not, not worried about what everybody else is doing, what's going on in our culture, what's happening on the news, what's, getting, what's, what's stirring up in your, with your neighbors and what's happening with your family members. But what if we came into it and we said, let there be light. Let there be light. What if we begin to mimic God? What if we begin to do what he did and speak light into darkness? I want you to know, darkness actually doesn't even exist. It is just a figment of our imagination. Science would tell us that darkness is just simply the absence of light. It's not measurable. You can't, there's no speed to darkness. Light has a speed. It's measurable. It's actually a created substance. Darkness is just simply the absence of something that God created and intended to bring his goodness, his glory. God created light from the beginning. And the first day of creation, he says, let there be light. And I want you to notice that this is not the day that he created the sun. He said, let there be light long before there was a sun. And later in the fourth day, God declares that there would be the sun and the moon and the stars and the lights of the heavens. But God said, let there be light even before there was a sun, because God wanted you to know that the light he's talking about is not just the light of day, but the light that he's talking about is the light of his presence and the light of his glory, the light of his goodness. And this is what he wants in your life. He said there, I'm not even going to create the sun on the same day as the light because I don't want you to get the two mixed up. Because light is something totally different than just what the sun gives. Light is something that only comes from the Father of lights. It's every good and perfect gift that comes down from above. His light is something that has been deposited into each one of our lives, and he intends for that light to not just stay put in a, in a place inside of us, but to be shining out of us into the world around us. I begin to hear this declaration going round and round in my spirit, and I just dare you to write this down and begin to speak it over each day of your life, to begin to say, there will be light. There will be light. Let there be light. Where there's darkness, let there be light. Where there's, if you work in a dark place, let there be light. 
If you sense the darkness is creeping into your house, let there be light. It's not a matter of if God wants it there. We're not talking about trying to figure out the complexities of God's will in your life. We're talking about figuring out how you can actually let out of you what God placed inside of you to change the world around you. It's not a matter of getting rid of the darkness. It's a matter of getting in the light. See, lightness, light and dark are not equals. They're not competing with one another. I mean, anytime light and dark show up in the same place, light always wins. There's no competition. See, and we've been, we've been shaped in our minds and our ways of thinking by religion to think that there's some, some, some big you know, competition that God has with darkness. God has no competition. He, he has no rival. He has no equal. He has none that can compare. There's none that can stand against him. There's none that can stand against his presence. And so the light of God's countenance and his presence, his face shining in your life is not even overcomable. It cannot be overcome. Let there be light. I just hear this over and over and over again. It's so significant, I think, to me that that this season, the Christmas season that we come into is, is marked by lights. And, you know, maybe you're one of those crazy people that starts putting up Christmas declaration, decorations even before Thanksgiving. Who does that in here? Come on. If you, you've already done that, go on and be honest with me. It, who's got their Christmas tree up already? Who's got their Christmas? Don't lie in church. You know you got, you the only one, you guys. Okay. So some people get carried away and get this thing ahead of time. But here's what I love about this season. You see lights everywhere. I love the lights of Christmas. I love the lights. We were talking, my, my brother Zach, man, it's so good to have you guys here. But he was telling me he went to the lights uh, over at Callaway Gardens uh, yes, or was that Friday? And, and, and just the, the lights. Why is it that this season is marked by lights? Because we are celebrating not just the, 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 that Jesus came to the earth, but that the light of the world showed up in darkness. And when Jesus showed up, he brought with him heaven's light. And he said, let there be light for all who will receive my light. Look, there is no competition. I don't know how you see this applying to your life today, but before we leave here, we're going to do something, and it might be be crazy, it it may, may, whatever, but it's just what I saw in my heart. I wanted us to do, we're going to begin to declare light over some dark places today together. We're going to join hands all across this room. I'm prepping you for it now. We're going to join hands all across this room. We're going to begin to declare, let there be light in every dark corner of your life. Let there be light. If there's no light in, in your heart, if there's no light, listen, you may be walking around in confusion and feel like you're in a dark fog and a cloud and you don't know what's going on and you're just really confused about this situation. Let there be light. Come on, listen, cancer can't stand light. Cancer can't stand light. Diabetes can't stand light. No heart issues can stand light. Light, it actually does things that, that nothing else can do. His light actually brings healing and transformation because it drives out every work of the enemy, every work of darkness. Come on, every prince of the power of the air, every, every, uh, every, every dark ruler that has tried to make its way into your life has to leave when we declare the light of God is welcome here. So those that have been sitting in darkness have sat there long enough. And I just believe that for this community. I believe it for your home. I believe it for your children. I bet some of you got family members and children that are far from God and they're living in darkness and they may put on a face and show up for church, but you know they're sitting in dark places and I'm telling you, let there be light is the answer in their life. It's the answer. The light is still the answer. When God showed up on the scene and he saw the earth was formless and void, it was without purpose and identity. I've taught about this many times before, but when God shows up on the scene, he sees this formless, pointless, fruitless earth And he says, you need identity. You need purpose. What does he do? He doesn't go plant in the garden right away. He doesn't even make man and put him on the earth yet. He says, first and foremost, let there be light. Because he knew that the light would make the way for every other plan of God on the earth. Can you imagine if God had never shown up and said, let there be light? Let me me just tell you what would happen. This would still be a formless and void planet. Everything that we see that has order has, has been given order by the light of God. We were uh, in Israel several, you know, whenever that was now, it's been a while ago. And when we were over there, guys, I, I, one of the things that just blew my mind right off the bat, when we landed the airplane, I realized that this country does not understand order. And that's not a slap on anybody. 
But we got to the airport and there were hundreds of people trying to make it through customs and there were no lines. No lines anywhere. It's just a mob of people all trying to get through the same two doors. And there's no order. There was no place, you know, in, 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 in our nation we have, you can go through a line and it's got this little zigzag thing, you know, with the little ropes that, that make sure that you stay in line and make sure that you get where you're going to. And, and listen, because of that order, it produces things quickly. There are some things that are being stalled in your life, not because it's not God's will for you to be walking in them, but because you are walking out of order. Chaos is the product of darkness. Dysfunction and chaos are the product of darkness. If your family's living in chaotic situations, and I'm not just talking about like you had a bad day. I'm talking about like there is just turmoil and chaos all the time being stirred up all around you. You feel like it's chaos at work, it's chaos at home, it's chaos in your, in your marriage, it's chaos in your finances. Everything's just all up in the air all the time. It is a result, a fruit of darkness. God wants to bring order he wants to bring his function, his, he wants to bring his purposes, and he brings it through bringing light. He shines light on darkness, and it brings order. There is no fight. The darkness immediately retracts when light shows up on the scene. There's never an argument. There's never a debate. A vote is never taken. Darkness just always retreats. It is no equal to God's light. He said, let there be light. And there was light. Now watch this verse four. And God saw the light that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. He put a separation between what was producing chaos and disorder. And he built a wall and separated it from those things that were going to produce light and life and, and functionality. He brought order, but then he didn't just set order there to be undone by the chaos of the planet. He set order in place and then he said, now I'm going to divide the darkness from the light so that no longer can the darkness have what I intended to be in order in the light. Now here's the problem and, and, and this is where we, we get mixed up here. We're celebrating a season of light right now. And I guarantee you, not every person that has lights on their house is full of the light. And just because you got lights on your house or a cross in your front yard or a manger scene with a baby in it does not mean that you know what light is. Because you plugged it up into an electrical socket does not make you a Christian. You're going to have to have the light of life. You're going to have to have the light of God in your life. And he separated the light from the darkness. And he said that you cannot cross the two. But what we have tried to do in religion, what we've tried to do in our religious culture is to blend light and darkness to make the dark not so dark, but then make the light not so light. And it doesn't work. He separated the light from the darkness. He never intended for there to be, oh, a little dark. He never intended for there to be just a little light. You're either in the light or you're in the dark. He separated the two. And our culture is bent on trying to figure out a way to blend light and darkness so that maybe the darkness won't be as dark and maybe the light doesn't have to be as bright. That's not God's way. It'll never work. Light and darkness have never been able to mix. They've never been able to take on the same form. Because one produces chaos and death and the other produces life and order. Chaos and death are the result of darkness. But it's just funny that if there's a little darkness, that same seed of that darkness is producing the same result as if there had been never any light at all. So we look around even at our community here. And you can see some little blips of light. You can see some light being shining. You say, oh, that's wonderful. Isn't that great? We got some light showing up here, a little light there, a little bit of light here. But so long as the light is just in the midst of the darkness, the light is unfruitful. In fact, the opposite ends up happening because then what ends up happening is we become people satisfied with a mixture of light and dark. A mixture of those things, that, uh, of a little bit of God, but enough of the world to satisfy our flesh. 
He divided the day from the night to demonstrate to us his plan was never for us to remain in any, for, in any part of, of darkness, in any way of darkness. If there's any part of our hearts that are still secluded in darkness, he said, no, let there be light. His desire for each and every one of our families is to be places of light. One thing that I learned, I didn't give them the picture, but one really cool thing that they've done over there as we're walking around in Jerusalem is they have built a replica of the uh, lampstand, the great menorah that would stand in the, in the temple. And they have built another one just like it. It's made out of gold. Uh, I think out of like three or four million dollars worth of gold. Isn't that what they said? I mean, this thing is, and it's sitting in a glass case just right out in the middle of the city waiting to be placed in the temple that they plan to build. It's massive. It's a massive lampstand. It's, it's, it's like six or seven feet tall. This thing is huge. It would give off an enormous amount of light. You see, this lampstand would be placed in the temple and it would be the source of light in the temple. It would, even at, at nighttime, when, when the priests would be attending to the altar, they couldn't let the fire go out. They had to go in there at night. They had to go in there and take care of the things of God and worship the Lord. Even in the night, even in the dark, in this menorah would be the light in that place. Even in the presence of God, there would be this, this candlestick burning. It's not surprising to me then that we, we know that even in the book of Revelation that the church, the body of Christ is described as being lampstands in the earth because we are the light of the world. We have shucked that responsibility and passed it off to the clergy and to the, to the people that have gone to seminary schools and have, have figured out you know, their, the ins and outs of the Bible. But I want you to know, if you're a believer, you have been deposited with the light of God and that light has been given to you so that you would be the light of the world. There's the menorah right there. One thing that I found out there, though, is that every Jewish home, even since the time of Jesus, has one of these in their house. Now it's not a six footer. It's probably not made out of gold. But they have some form of lampstand. They have the, the menorah, the seven stick uh, menorah in their home. And it, it would stand somewhere in a, in a place of, of notoriety, maybe in the, as the centerpiece of their table where they all gather around to eat. And it would sit in the middle of the table. And then we come into this season of Hanukkah where they, they light the, 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 each one of these things. But why is it there? It's there to remind the people of God that they are the light of the world, that their home is the temple of God, that they, are the, the, that they carry the presence of God with them wherever they go. Amen. It's not just when you come to the church. It's not just what happens inside these four walls, but it's what's happening inside of your house. It's what's happening around your table. It's what is, is the light of God being shown even in, in your family. Is the light of God being shown in your home to your children. Because this is the light that, that God sends to bring truth and to bring peace and to bring joy and to bring his presence to the world. This represents much more than what the Jewish people would think it does. But this candlestick, this, this place of light that, that is standing in, in the temple there, even in Jesus' day, and these little lights meant to remind them of the reflection of the temple in their homes is, is not just a picture of light, but it is a picture of the Lord Jesus himself. He is the light of the world, and because he is, I am the light of the world. Amen. You are the light of the world placed his light within you. Each one of us carries the light of God to bring it to dark places. Let there be light. Where there is darkness, let there be light. What if we begin to declare light into darkness? What if we begin to speak the word of God? What, what, what did Psalm, uh, Psalm 10, uh, 119 tell us? What did it say? It said that at the entry of your word comes light. What if you started going to work with the word of God on your mouth? What if you started speaking the word of God into your family, into your home, into your children? Say, I, I, don't, know, I don't know what to do. Just read it. Just read it. Read it out loud. Pick a scripture and read it out loud in your house every day and see if the light doesn't come in with it. The light of God is transforming. It's powerful. I don't know if you're hearing me today how, how significant this is of this season that we're walking into. We're not just paying for some people to keep their lights on. 
We're, we're being a demonstration of something that God is doing, not just in the natural, but he's also doing it in a supernatural, spiritual way. He's bringing light to the darkness. He's bringing light to the darkness. Amen? Amen. Whatever you focus on will begin to illuminate. You know, one of the things that I, I feel like is so necessary in the body of Christ is that we begin to focus on the light rather than the darkness. Because when we focus on the darkness, we don't reflect any light. We just reflect more darkness. I mean, we're like mirrors. But when we behold the light, we reflect the light of God into the culture around us. And this is, this is a game changer, man. This right here is how we change the world. We turn darkness upside down by just focusing on the light. We've got to look at the light. Whatever you focus on, you will begin to bring change to. This is a, this is a, a natural law in the world. What you focus on begins to change. And so when you focus on things in your life that are in darkness, what, what, what's going to be happening is, is you are going to begin to see the light of God pierce through that thing if you're declaring the light into it. So here's what's going to, here's what's going to happen. You, you, you're facing this situation and this turmoil, and so you, you've been so consumed by it. It's had all of your thoughts. It's had all of your attention. It's had all of So what you're going to do is you're going to say, God, instead of paying attention to how dark this situation is, I'm going to see the light I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fix my eyes and my focus and my attention on you so that you can then reflect into this situation the light that this situation needs. If you're focusing on the, how, how dark it is, you're never going to be able to see the potential for how bright his light can be in that circumstance, in that situation. I've got to begin to declare the light of God. The enemy's trying to keep you from noticing how bright the light is. You know, here's one thing that happens. I, I notice we, we pay a lot more attention to the darkness than we do to the light. Even you, you think about it, our media today is a huge money-making business on what? Good news? No. Bad news. The worse, the better. I mean, if, if, it's, if it's not falling apart, let's kick it a couple of times and see if it will fall apart so that we got something we can make some more money off of. I mean, let's make this thing look as bad. Y'all remember, y'all ever see the, the clip, even the Weather Channel gets in on this, guys? Y'all remember seeing the clip with the guy and he's like, I, you know, I look like he's about to get blown away out there in the storm and here come like two guys in like shorts and flip-flops like walking by. <laughs> Why? Because trouble sells. Darkness is appealing to darkness. And the world is drawn to the darkness. It's drawn to what's dark. It's drawn to what's bad. It's, and if, it, if, if we can't find it there, then we'll create it. Because that's what we're into, man. This is why it's so dangerous. And I want to give you a warning as people of the light. The Bible says to walk in the light as he is in the light. And so if, you, if you're consumed by the news... If, if you're consumed by the media and the news, you're going to be caught up in darkness. It's just going to happen. And whether you realize it or not, darkness has become entertaining to you. Now, I know people don't want to hear that. But it might just be time to turn off some things. I, I have watched people, and if I, I could stand here and tell you a list of people you know that are casualties of focusing on the wrong things. They will get caught up in a, in, look, I, I, I better get all, away from it, but you know what I'm saying. One last verse and I'm going to be done here today. Isaiah 60, I'm, I'm going to be talking about this. Maybe this will be a, somewhat of a series here, but we're going to talk about the light of this Christmas. Isaiah 60, one of my favorite passages in all the Bible, but it's, Unless you're in the right context, and unless you're hearing this in the right context and what we're talking about and understanding what it means to be a light in the darkness, you will miss what this scripture is saying to you. So 
Isaiah 60, verse 1. It says, Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Man, I've got to read it again. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. Listen, this is the word of the Lord to you today. It's time to get up and let the glory of God deal with the darkness in your life. It's time to get up and let the glory of God deal with the darkness in your home. You know, there are different seasons that each one of us go through and in some seasons, you may find yourself like I have before, just being distracted by life, just being consumed with taking care of the things that need to be taken care of and the people that you need to take care of and the issues that are going on around you. And I'll be honest with you, like I've been in this place before in my own life where I got so busy trying to attend to all of the details of all of the, 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 the methods of survival that we all live in. That before we know it, we turn around and we find darkness in places where darkness ought not be. Then it's not a death sentence. It, it, it's not time to throw up your hands and say, oh, well. It, it's not time just because you turned around and somewhere that should be in the light is now in darkness in your life. That's not the time to, to sit back and go, oh, well, I guess we lost that one. Come on, what kind of, what kind of parent is going to let your kid just go off darkness I said, oh, well, I mean, what, what, kind of, what kind of person, what kind of man is going to stand and watch their house fall into darkness and not do anything about it? See, God, he's a good father, and he demonstrated to us what it meant to stand, to arise, to bring light to the world. For God so loved the world. Listen, we were the, the lost children of God. We were those that had gone astray and had fallen in love with darkness when our Father is the Father of lights. We fell in love with darkness and He had a plan. He said, I'm not just going to stand back and watch this happen. I'm not just going to sit back and let the world that I love fall into darkness. He said, I got to do something drastic. So I'm going to take the light that is in me and I'm going to send it to the earth. John chapter 1 tells us that he was the light of God. The light is the life of men. He was sent to the world in the beginning. God had a plan. He created the light that you and I see to be a natural reminder of how desperate we are for his light. And when the earth was fallen back into chaos and disorder and formlessness, purposelessness because of sin, he said, I got to do something. And he took the light of his own life and he sent it to the sun, to, to the earth, his own son. And his son became the light of the world so that you and I could walk in the light as he is in the light. Come on, this is the gospel. This is the good news. This is what this is all about, guys. This is why we're here. This is why we can sing those songs. Death has lost its grip on me because death and darkness in the grave were pierced through by the light of God's love when his son came down to the earth. Why? Because God decided not to sit back and watch us perish, but to stand up and to deal with the darkness in our lives. The Bible says, arise, shine. Your light has come. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Don't just sit back and watch the world go into darkness. Don't just sit back and watch your family fall off into an abyss. Don't just sit back and let your marriage fall apart. Don't just sit back and let this church fall apart. Don't just, don't just sit back and watch this community sail off into darkness. Don't just sit back. I think that, you know what the only thing that's missing in this blessed nation that we have? is enough believers willing to arise and let the light of God be seen in our lives. Arise, shine. Your light has come. And the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. 
For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth and deep darkness the people. But the Lord will arise over you and his glory will be seen upon you. The Gentiles shall come to your light and kings to the brightness of your rising. Lift up your eyes all around and see. They gather together. They come to you. Your sons shall come from afar and your daughters shall be nursed at your side. Then you shall see and become radiant. What does that mean? Come on. You will see and become radiant. Why? Because the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. And your heart shall swell with joy. I want to skip over to verse 19 now. It says, The sun shall no longer be your light by day, nor for brightness shall the moon give light to you. But the Lord will be to you an everlasting light, and your God your glory. Your sun shall no longer go down, nor shall your moon withdraw itself, for the Lord will be your everlasting light, and the days of your mourning shall be ended. Also your people shall be all be righteous. They shall inherit the land forever, the branch of my planting, the work of my hands, that I may be glorified. Man, when I see a scripture like this, and I know that God is trying to speak a word of life into me, it makes me posture myself differently than if, if, I'm, if I'm just trying to figure out how to be a better person. What it does is it causes me to look at it and say, God, if there's any darkness in me, your light is enough. I mean, the darkness has no power over the light. No power. It's not even real. The effects of it have been seen. You can see the effects of darkness in every corner of our world. You can see the effects of darkness in your own home, probably. You can see it in your own family. You can see it in your own life. But the effects of darkness are not the consequence of darkness just being all powerful in your life. The effects of darkness, the consequences of darkness are the effect of the absence of the light. Arise. It's time to get up. It's time to stand up. It's time to be those that reflect the light of God. In this season, we're stepping into so much more than just giving gifts and singing songs. But we're stepping into a season of God saying there are dark places that I'm calling you to. There are dark places that I'm calling you to. And if, if you don't go bring the light, it's going to stay dark. If you don't bring the light, it's going to stay dark. He sent the light over you so that the light could pierce the darkness through you. I feel like that one of the things that, that we need to do today is we need to place in front of each one of us that place of darkness and we just need to declare in unity, let there be light. So I want us to do that today as we get ready to close. I want us to all stand up on our feet. This is something different. I've never done anything quite like this before. You guys know. But I want to say, if we can, let's just all kind of merge together in one section here. I want to invite you to squeeze together and get, uh, get as close together as you can. James chapter 1. Every good and every perfect gift comes down from above, from the Father of lights. From the Father of lights. The Father of lights. Come on, he's your, he's your father. This is kind of disorderly here. All right, let's do something. Let's do, let's look. Maybe the earth was formless and void. So let there be light and make a circle. Okay, how about that? Make a circle. All right, make a circle. There you go. And you guys come up here so you can join hands with somebody here. Come up, come up here this way, this way. Let's make a circle. All right, we can do this. This is kind of an awkward looking circle, but it's all right. It's all right. Every good, every perfect gift comes down from above. Every good and every perfect gift comes down from above. Come over here with us, Al. Can't miss you, man. 
from the Father of lights. From the Father of lights. Now I'm going to pray. And while I'm praying, here's what I want you to do. I want you to be agreeing with me as I pray. But then I also want you to, if, there, if somebody comes to your heart and you know they're, they're walking in darkness right now, you, I, I, I would encourage you, not, not loud, but I would encourage you to say their name out loud. I would encourage you to speak it out loud. If there's a situation in your home, in your family, in, in your marriage, in your finances, and you know it's, it's, it's in a dark place, I want you to bring that in front of you right now, and we're going to speak light to it, okay? We're going to speak light to it. We're going to begin to declare, let there be light in every dark place. So while I'm praying, I want to invite you to do that. I want you to find every, every bit of darkness in your own life. Listen, it starts with us. If we don't deal with the darkness in us, we have no right to deal with the darkness out there. Do you hear what I'm saying? Yes. We got to deal with the darkness in here before we can ever think of dealing with the darkness out there. So Lord, right now, Lord, we join together in unity. And Lord, we ask for the light of God to rise over us once again. Lord, I thank you that you have allowed your glory to be deposited into each one of our lives. And Lord, as your light has pierced through my darkness, Lord, I pray that you would equip us and empower us to be those that influence the darkness around us with your light. And so, Lord, today, by the entry of your word, let your light come forth. By the entry of your word, let your light come forth. And Lord, I pray that every dark situation, every dark and hopeless situation, Lord, every, every situation that seems hopeless and lost, every person that's walking in darkness right now, even if they're in this room around this circle and they're living in a dark place, Lord, I pray that your light pierce through the darkness and Lord, that your light would, would crush the power of darkness in their lives. Lord, that every person we're bringing before you right now, those that are lost, those that are in darkness, those that have, 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 uh, have given themselves over to the world. Lord, I pray, God, for light to pierce through. Not in 10 years, not in, not in five years, but Lord, even now, in this moment, God, that this day, that arrows of truth and light, God, would leave this place and would fly right to where they are, would begin to cause change to happen. I thank you, God, for phone calls that are going to be made and text messages that are going to be received, God, as the light of God pierces through the darkness. Lord, I thank you for breakthroughs in finances, God, that are being broken loose today because of the light coming into the darkness. Lord, I thank you for relationships that are being mended, that are being even created because of the light piercing through the darkness. Lord, I thank you for confusion that's being broken off of everyone's mind in this room right now because of your light piercing through the darkness. The chaos in the lives of anyone in this room, anybody, any individual that we place before you right now today, Lord, I pray that your light would pierce through the darkness, that you, the giver of good and perfect gifts, the Father of lights, be glorified in each one of our lives. And Lord, I pray for it right now. And so right now, Lord, we declare it together, let there be light light. And I want us to all do it together. Place that thing right in front of you and with your whole heart today, let it be declared out of your mouth. At the entry of your word, Lord, let there be light. Let there be light. Come on, say it with me. Let there be light. Where there is darkness, let there be light. Every sickness, no cancer can stand against the light. So Lord, let your light come. No sickness, no disease, no, uh, no infirmity, no demonic spirit can stand in the light. So let there be light today. Let there be light today in every life, in every life. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Come on, thank the Lord. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen.